This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's New Product Rundown features Italeri's Big F35, Mini Arts T54, Airfix's B17, AMT's Excelsior, and Trumpeter's MiG31. New Product Rundown, proudly brought to you by HobbyCo, distributors of fine model kits from Italeri. Welcome to the New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly preview of the latest kits and accessories. I'm Elizabeth Nash. I'm Aaron Skinner. We've got a killer lineup for you today, starting with Italeri's 132nd scale F35A. There's been a lot of buzz about this one since the company announced it more than a year ago. This is the Air Force conventional takeoff and landing version of the Joint Strike Fighter. The fifth generation multi-role fighter is just a little bit bigger than the F-16 and comes out to just over 19 inches long in 32nd scale. Clean describes the surface of Lockheed's Stealthy Lightning II. The kit mimics that austerity with smooth plastic broken only by the characteristic raised panels and zigzag edges. Large openings for the landing gear and weapons bay might have made the lower fuselage weak, but for the heavy plastic used for the parts. The wings attach to the fuselage with a long lap joint. Separate flaps and slats feature rounded hinge surfaces, so should be posable. The stabilators feature fine trailing edges, but the mounts will require modification for a pose other than neutral. The vertical tails have sharp leading edges and separate rudders. The cockpit tub includes detail on the consoles. The real ones are pretty simple, with separate side stick and throttle. The multi-part ejection seat does a pretty good job of replicating the Martin Baker US-16E seat used on the Lightning II. The simple instrument panel uses a decal for the flat panel display. Self-adhesive clear plastic covers the screen. Photo etched seat belts and rudder pedals round out the cockpit detail. Intake trunks curve from the front to join an engine. Most of it will be hidden, but the front and rear fans as well as the multi-part nozzle have good detail. Underneath, the weapon bay can be posed open. Molded and added detail looks appropriately busy and the bays will benefit from careful painting. The doors can be posed open on sturdy hinges. The landing gear bays feature similar molded detail that will pop with careful painting and washes. Cleanly molded landing gear struts include separate actuators, oleo scissors, and even molded brake lines. The wheels are weighted. Particularly nice touch is the inclusion of a posable boarding ladder and its bay. Other options include posable refueling receptacle and canopy. The ladder has separate frame rails and internal braces. The clear parts, including the sharp one-piece canopy, lights, and both external and internal parts for the chin-mounted targeting system, feature a gold tint. In addition to the internal bays, you can fit your F-35 with underwing pylons. It ruins the Lightning II's stealth, but it makes it look meaner. Ordnance options include a pair each of AIM-9X Sidewinders, AIM-120 AMRAMs, and GBU-31 JDAMs. Decals provide stencils for the airframe and weapons, as well as individual markings for six F-35s, two USAF birds, and one each from Italy, Australia, the Netherlands, and Israel. One of the challenges in painting F-35 models has been the complicated pattern of the lightly raised panel outlines, many of which include zigzag edges. Italeri helps builders with the inclusion of masks for those. Obviously, as the first Lightning II and 132nd scale, Italeri's kit is without peer, but the options and level of detail make it a winner. Speaking of winners, you could be one and get your very own copy of this kit. To enter, go to the link in the description below. A lucky winner will be announced April 17th. Entries close at 11.59 p.m. on April 16th. Next, let's take a look at Mini Arts 135th scale T-54-1. On the way to becoming one of the world's most widely produced tanks, the T-54 and 55 family took a few detours. The T-54-1 was the initial production version with narrow tracks, a turret reminiscent of late T-34s rather than the more familiar upside-down frying pan and fixed fender-mounted machine guns. Many art previously released the T-54-1 with a pretty complete interior. This kit is on its second release and omits much of the internal detail. The lower hull has separate road wheel arm attachments with terrific end caps, road wheel arms, and side panels. Well-molded road wheels attach outside and inside are torsion bars, which run under the fighting compartment floor. The wheels, idlers, and drive sprockets are designed to be movable, which should make track installation easy. Those tracks are supplied as individual links. The glasses plate, upper hull, and engine deck parts complete the hull. The engine screens are provided in photo-etched brass. The fret also includes straps and handles for the fuel tanks, straps for the smoke canisters and the unditching log, latches, fender braces, and more. Outstanding describes the fenders. They and the mud flaps have detail on the undersides. Fuel tanks, tool and storage boxes, and grousers bulk up those fenders. Up front are the forward firing machine guns unique to this version. Slide molding produces one-piece smoke dispensers for the rear plate. The same process gives the one-part main gun a hollow muzzle. 
This kit provides some of the gun's breech, but not all, as seen in previous versions. The turret exterior includes upper and lower halves with cast texture. The mantlet has a different, slightly rougher texture, and the hatch section is split into two parts. Clear parts are supplied for the vision blocks and light lenses. A small decal sheet and clear diagrams provide four options, including two tanks in overall green, one green with distressed winter whitewash, and a colorful T-54 in three-color camo. With details and terrific moldings, Mini Arts T-54 looks like a fun build. Next, we have Airfix's 172nd scale B-17. Flying Fortresses are popular, and this is by no means the first 172nd scale kit of the Heavy Bomber. It's not even the first from Airfix, which kitted one in 1962, the same year Ravel's 172nd scale kit was released. Surface detail comprises recessed panel lines with some raised rivets and sharply molded vents and intakes. Ravel Germany's recent Flying Fortress was also a B-17G, but represented an early version with symmetrical waist guns. Airfix has the later staggered waist positions. The elevators, ailerons, and rudder are posable, but the split flaps are molded into the wings. The engine cylinders have front and rear faces with molded ignition wires, intake and exhaust manifolds, and firewalls. The main cowls are single-piece rings, and optional open and closed cowl flaps are provided. The reduction gear covers trap posts that become the propeller shafts. The exhaust meets separate turbochargers. There's great hub detail on the wheels, and the tires are weighted. Optional parts allow the gear to be posed up or down. We haven't even mentioned interior detail. In addition to longerons and frames molded inside the fuselage, there are floors for the cockpit, nose compartment, radio operator, and waist. Sidewalls, seats, pedals, controls, and instrument panel complete the flight deck. Seats, bomb sight, ammunition boxes, controls, radios, and guns fill many of the compartments. There are also details for the gun turrets. The bomb bay fits between bulkheads that incorporate sturdy wing spars. Racks, frames, a ceiling, and four 500-pound bombs detail the bay and the doors can be separated to pose them open. Clear parts include the windshield, radio room, waist windows, lights, and the top and ball turrets. The cheek windows, Cheyenne tail turret, and the crew door incorporate parts for the fuselage. Optional parts here and elsewhere point at other versions to come. Cartograph decals provide markings for two 8th Air Force bombers in England in early 1945. Skyway, Chariot, and Ma Ideal alternate markings backdate the latter, and numerous stencils are included. Airfix's all-new B-17 looks like it may be the best 172nd scale flying fortress yet, with thoughtful engineering, good options, and plenty of detail. Heading into the final frontier, we explore AMT's latest release of the 1 1,000th scale USS Excelsior. Once crippled by Montgomery Scott, the experimental spaceship would later be commanded by Hikaru Sulu. Not a brand new molding by any stretch, the Excelsior was first released in the mid-1990s. The kit includes optional bridge, impulse deck, and shuttle bay parts to build either NX-2000 from Star Trek III or NCC-2000 from Star Trek VI. Surface detail combines recessed panel lines and fine ridges. Clear parts dress up the warp nacelles. Other clear parts include the impulse engines, sensor dish, and more. As with other recent AMT re-releases from round two, the kit includes comprehensive painting instructions and decals with stripes, windows, phaser banks, federation insignia, and registry markings for both NX-2000 and NCC-2000. And if you want to go hull hog on the Starship, grab AMT's aftermarket Aztec decal set for the model. In addition to a whole bunch of swatches of Aztec paneling, the cartograph printed sheets include most of the colors on the secondary hull. Alternate shades cover other ships, and the set includes registry marks for the USS Hood, USS Melbourne, and USS Valley Forge. Another welcome Star Trek release, and the extra decal sheet makes it extra attractive. Welcome to a new feature, Fine Scale Modeler After Dark. Finally, we have Trumpeter's 172nd scale MiG-31 Foxhound. This kit replicates the B version with an air refueling probe added just in front of the cockpit on the port side. 
Optional clear parts allow for the rearview periscope fitted to the later BM variant. Both front and rear canopies are shown posed open only in the instructions. The airframe is split into the upper fuselage rear of the cockpit with integral upper wing halves, lower wing inserts, one-piece vertical stabilizers, and the belly of the beast. Fine recessed panel lines and rivets mark the parts as well as a few raised lines under the wing roots. The nose halves sandwich a detailed cockpit with tub, walls, controls, seats, and optional instrument panels. Detailed intakes extend to a bulkhead with fans and nicely molded exhaust out back. Gear bays, speed brakes, wing fences, and more look extra fine. As does the landing gear. Stores include fuel tanks, four R33, two R40T, and two R40R long-range air-to-air missiles, and a pair each of R77 medium and R73E short-range missiles. In addition to stencils for the weapons and airframe, decals provide markings for two Foxhounds. Extra numbers allow other aircraft to be built. Looks good. Check out detailed build reviews of the MiG-31, F-35, T-54, and B-17 in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. That's a mouthful of letters and numbers. You can also see new products in the May issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And it's a long way to the top when you want to rock and roll. In addition to longerons and frames, lo bleh. Longerons. Don't forget to pack your longerons. <laughs> Thanks for being you.